Go ahead and go to the Chapter 25 Elevation Plan Development for Residences. You all should, in your Blackboard messages now, have a message from me that contains a file. If you go to your inbox, Garage Plan, please right click and download the garageplan.dwg file and just put it on your desktop. Okay, you can go ahead and open that up. What I want you to do is just put your floor plan aside for now, your house plan. Now bear in mind that this we're just doing elevations today. I'm not going to be as concerned with context of roof plans because that's going to come next. Okay. Now before we actually get to that, oh, go ahead and open the garage plan. But what I really want you to do, and Tim, you can move the recorder because I want you all to come back to this back table. It is pretty much the glass box because we're actually going back in time to drafting 12. Okay. What I have here is a plan view of a house plan. Okay. From that, I have a back view, front view, side view, side view, relative to my how I'm oriented. Okay. This is actually front, back, side, side. This was last semester's plan, not your plan. What I want you to consider, though, is that I am aligning each one of these views with the floor plan. So just like we did in drafting 12, top, front, right side view, okay, we are going to take the information that we know from the plan view and translate that with construction lines into a plane that is going to give us ground level, okay, or floor level, okay, to top of roof, to top of wall, okay. Now, like I said, today I'm concentrating on elevation, so I'm really not concentrating on roof plan yet. We'll come back to that. From a problem solving perspective, what we want to do ultimately is to be able to correlate the plan view to each of these side views. The reason I'm showing it to you in this configuration is that there's a little bit of that kind of get deal with it in our brains that the view has to correlate directly from the plan to the side which puts the roof closest to the plan view which seems a little counterintuitive a lot of students have trouble with that that's why I want to show you that the peak of the roof actually faces the center of the plan so each of your ground levels is going to be furthest away from the plan view now, knowing only what you know right now, and if I were in CAD and you were saying to me, this is how I would do it, how would you go about getting this plan information offset to create your top of footing and your grade level? How would you get that to offset to create that grade level? You know what I mean, offset. Hey, there we go. Somebody said it. Offset. I'll be darned. Right? It wasn't a trick question. Right? You, yeah, I kept saying offset because that's what I'm looking for you to do. Right? So we're going to offset each of our exterior boundaries to at least create that grade level. Well, the important thing is, is that we've got to create it equally all the way around. That's why we're going to start with the garage plans. 20 by 20, it's easy. I can literally offset it as a, a rectangle or a box. A square if I want to. But in our case, with a floor plan that isn't so regular, we want to take the wall that is most exterior and furthest away from center and use that as our guide. You want to create it in such a way that you have plenty of room to account for the eventuality of the roof. Okay? Now we're creating stuff that's oriented in kind of a weird way. We like to make sure that we draw in such a fashion that what we're drawing is at least heads up to us, right? Well, AutoCAD has these really cool tools that allows us literally to rotate model space. So every one of these views, I can rotate using my view cube and my information, and I can bring it to a configuration that works. We can also create it in paper space 
so that when I'm actually doing my layout for my elevations, I can create a paper space view that shows the orientation of these correctly on the page. Okay? All right. Will you be using your, uh, your, your uh, floor plan for each one? You would uh, do your construction lines for each elevation. That's what you're going to do. You're going to exactly. It exactly. And, do it. And, and why? Right? Why? Because <coughs> every one of my window and door openings to the exterior is right there. So every place where I have a coincident relationship between wall and door, I'm going to be able to bring straight down, straight down or straight over and across. Okay? So all these elevation drawings are going to be same file, same drawing as the floor plan? That, that's the method that I am going to teach you. Okay? And, and let me tell you why. Because I think ultimately that saves you a lot of time and effort rather than trying to calculate and figure it out. You can copy your floor plan to another file. But some of you are probably already encountering this because I haven't really said don't do it that way. You are, you, some of you are using multiple files, right? Whatever you change in one, what do you have to do? Change it in the other. Mm -hmm. So the more files that you propagate, the more control you have to put on change. And one of the biggest challenges that we face with CAD is change. It's easy because change is quick. It's easy to click on a line, erase it, do what you want, manipulate it. Not so easy to manage it drawing to drawing to drawing. So if it's all in the same model, that helps. Okay. So you would throw your floor plan in the middle and create mm -hmm. construction lines and just do mm -hmm. each view and then you yep. copy it. Yeah, and the great part is you got an infinite drawing space, so you can do that. Okay, so elevation today. So I'm really interested in grade to top of wall. I'm not going to worry so much about putting a roof plan on it. That will be next. All right, we'll do that next. I really pulled this information, uh, you know, just from a stock file that I had. later. And put it there. And now we will turn off dimension layer. Okay. So we have basic wall configurations in our plan view. We've got our windows cut. We've got our doors cut. Go ahead and go back, get out of your layout, go back to your model space, please, okay? So that your, your plan looks like mine. I have a 20 foot by 20 foot garage. I need to account for information that's going to be eight feet from bottom of wall to top of wall plus probably another six inches to grade plus on a basic four and twelve pitch probably another five six feet okay so I need to think about offsetting my work sufficiently to account for all those things whoops I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to go ahead and offset. And I'm going to just keep it real simple and I'm going to do 20 feet. And remember which way is the peak of my roof facing? Towards the center of the floor plan or away? Towards the floor plan. Okay. And I think, you know, again, I'm using this as my indicator. That's just my convenient spot. But I'm probably going to go ahead and now make this as a construction line. Uh, 
wanted actually to rename that by now. I created a new one called layer one and I'm going to rename that now to elevation and I'm just going to call that construction for now. And I'm going to make it yellow so it's easy to see. But you can do anything you like. I mean, I'm, again, this is not a beginning class, so I'm not mandating it. you do it a certain way. So I have given myself enough that I can account for a peak of a roof and I can account for the wall system itself. So I'm going to take this line, offset again, And what have I just connect, constructed? Top plate. Top plate. OK. And now, rather than draw construction lines, I will just go ahead and use rays. The only difference between an array and a construction line is that a ray has a fixed point. It doesn't move infinitely in two directions. It only moves infinitely in one direction. And I'm going to account for all of my locations Yeah, it's all construction line right now, right? So I'm not, I haven't really drawn anything. But here's a question for you. Let me turn the light on real quick. What do you need, Moy? Snippet tool, accessories, snippet or snipping tool. Here to here, eight feet, eight feet zero inches. Okay, we've been making walls since drafting 12. We've been making windows since drafting 12. We've been making doors since drafting 12, right? You learned that the encoding that we've used refers to what? Right? And then the type of window. So far, we've really only cared about the width, right? We've got a new friend. Now we have to account for the height. Okay? So we have to account for what? Sill, if we just look at this back window here, even though it's very high, right? We have to account for the window sill and we have to account for header. And the distance in between is? About 14 inches. No, I mean from the header. <laughs> well, if I go back to my nomenclature here, the distance in between for this rough opening is 4 feet 0 inches. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to account for a standard header height, okay, at seven feet. So I'm going to offset this construction line one foot, and then I'm going to offset another construction line four feet. And what have I just created between this line, this line, this line, and this line? My window, okay? So the, the left is away from the right side? Bear in mind right now, all I know is that the height of this wall is this direction. But wait, there's more. See, it's Popeil's Pocket Fisherman right here. I don't like the way this is playing out, right, because I'm confused. So I'm actually going to use my tool and reorient my compass to allow me to now make that top of wall to bottom, 
right, as I come across. So now I feel a little bit more comfortable that my bearings are good. And all I did, if you notice, was change my compass and rotate it at 90 degrees. Okay? Yeah, I think actually that's a 6040 if I'm not mistaken. So, oops. Yes. So I'm offsetting this again, four feet. Okay. Now let me just move back to the position that I was in before. So this is top of wall, bottom, side, side, window opening. Okay. And so now that will affect the top plate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This area right here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I'm going to proceed and do the same thing, but I'm going to use a, a door opening instead, or excuse me, I'm going to use this back where the man door is and do the same thing over again. So what was the first offset that I did? 25, I think. Well, let's see. It's been one of those days, so I better find out. 20 feet. You guys are good. Better than me, apparently. You win. Good job. So Unlike orthographic projection in drafting 12, where it was critical that our top, our front, and our right side view were oriented so that it's the same width apart, okay? The answer to the question is you might be able to, but I'm going to throw a caution your way, all right? There are times when we may want to project into a home. We might want to or need to project an angled wall, like a pop-out, okay, for a breakfast nook or something of that nature. And if we have anything that crosses two planes like that, we should keep it the same distance in each view, each of our elevations, okay? So yeah, good practice says that if I'm 20 feet offset, I want to maintain 20 feet offset all the way around, okay? Some drafters will account for top of wall and bottom plate right out of the chute when they start making their exterior walls. Some will just go ahead and put that in. They'll put it on an elevation layer and they'll just make it go away. And then they'll come back to it later. There's good and bad to that, right? Because what happens if you start making adjustments to your wall? I don't usually like to do it as first practice. I usually do it at the back end. But one thing that happens a lot in architecture is what? Same as the last one, just a little different this time. Sometimes that difference has nothing to do with the walls or the elevations at all. It has everything to do with finish or interior structure, but not anything on the exterior. Okay? You got it. That would be preferred. Now, let's think about another reason why we might want to do that, okay? 
And I'm just going to zoom in right here. And intuitively, I kind of have a sense that if I place that miter line, right, I would hope Okay, 135 complementary to that is 45, right? If I do that, then do I need to use the offset command again? No. I can come right in, do a construction line, and now I can pick up even a little bit more speed than I had before. Okay, because my header height and my sill are probably going to end up the same. And there's a good insurance policy to that, isn't there? You guys ever looked at a house that somebody did a renovation on or an addition, and you just notice there's something wrong with that wall, like the bathroom window is not quite at the same height as everything else, or that window height for the bedroom is down just a little bit more? Our eyeballs really like to have uniformity of horizontal lines. We kind of live on it, right? There's crooked stuff in this room that probably drives you crazy. It drives me crazy, right? There it is. There it is. Whatever. We like to pick out that horizontal. So this is from a drafting perspective. I won't. From a drafting perspective, we want that uniformity to exist. Did you have a question, Chris? No. Okay. Nobody will touch it, I promise. Grab it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and use my rays, grab the corner, do I need to worry about the interior wall? No. Nope. Anybody remember back in the day when dirt was new? How, how can I go back to the same command over and over again? Space Thank you. Remember that space bar. Now I've accounted for my bathroom window. And now, uh, wait a minute. That's a door. Uh, and this wall is upside down. What can I do? Make it right side up. Okay. Yeah, so now that I've gotten two done and I've gotten these two adjacent walls done, I'm going to go ahead and now bear in mind I'm not I'm not following an AIA layer convention. I'm going to let you guys actually go back and use AIA layering conventions, but I'm just going to go ELE wall. And I'm going to change this to white. Make it current. And just because I can, number one and number two, probably reasonable practice for me to do so, I'm going to go ahead and make this window opening a polyline. Because now I'm going to be able to account for trim. And I can quickly do that with an offset and put trim on that window. And I'm going to use polylines for the rest of my elevation. Now if I turn off
What do you start to see? Okay. I can see I got a little housekeeping to do here. I don't really need that anymore. So I'm also going to turn off my elevation wall and get rid of that as well. By the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way. You guys ever end up with more layers than you expected? And you're like, oh, I just want to make that layer go away. It just doesn't look good in my list, right? Something was attached to that layer at one time. And you deleted it. It's not there anymore. You moved everything. It's not, but you can't delete the layer. Frustrating? <laughs> it happens, okay? You can do something called purge, okay? Caution. Any anytime you have a command that's associated with purge, it can be synonymous with pillage. Okay? But let's go through it and check it. And if I'm going to put my menu bar back up. And I can go to, oh, no, I can't, not from the menu bar. I'm just going to type in purge, P-U-R-G-E. Not with AutoCAD architecture, no. Okay. Whoa. This pulls up a whole new bucket of bolts. Okay. And you notice that as I'm going through all of this, there's an awful lot of stuff that attaches little data bits of code all over the place in this drawing. You had no idea. Let's go to layers. Nope. What do you think that number of layers is? I just used the purge command. Notice in the two buttons up above, it says the named objects you have, you have two choices, right? View items you can, view items you can't. So we'll go to the view items you can't and see if this layer's choice changes. Okay? So right now, stuff that I can change or purge is associated in that first layer list, and that means nothing got attached to it. But if there has been something attached to it, and I know for a fact it's not there anymore, then I can force it by using the purge command. Okay? But I just want you to know that that's there. And from time to time, we do need to do house cleaning. And particularly when we get a more and more and more trafficated workspace in our model file, we're going to end up with little entities here and there that are going to end up being real pains in our tuchus to get to go away. Okay? Now, I'm not going to purge anything right now because I, I just don't feel like it. But as you can see, we have many things that we can contend with, including blocks. And if you notice, we have blocks here that are associated. So this demo will be up so you'll be able to see the rest of it. OK. All right, thank you. There's a three-way switch, a bathroom exhaust fan, and a fluorescent light. Those are ones that I can't. The ones I can't are the ones that AutoCAD creates all by itself. Mm -hmm. So anything in paper space is considered to be a block as well. Okay. Notice all the styles that you can delete. Line types you can purge. Shapes. These are all things that go with the drawing. I just want you to be aware that that's there. 
And I'm going to close it because I'm not going to purge anything at this point, but I just want you to know that it's there. I'm going to turn on my construction and my walls again. And I'm just going to come over here and trim out Now I'll go ahead and turn off my construction layer. And you can see that I have my door accounted for. I have my bathroom window accounted for. And I'm going to go ahead and focus in on the bathroom window right now because sometimes we want to add a little bit of realism to the work. Okay? And the realism is going to come in the form of an offset then I'm going to create just by creating a window trim and I'm going to create a three inch window trim to the outside and then I'm going to use a line and I'm going to grab the midpoint of that line apparently I don't have it turned on that accounts for my slider and just to add a little bit more realism to it, I'm going to go ahead and add, what am I going to add? Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah, so even though I'm having a real great deal of trouble Work, working AutoCAD right now. I, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm feeling good about myself. And So not, not exactly perfect, but now I can go ahead and just quickly yeah, okay. That gives it a sense of realism, right? Exactly. I can do the same thing with my door trim and my sill. Okay. But in this case, because I made it a polyline, I probably want to explode. Select these three, offset. how to do that quick enough. Okay, But if I don't want to do that and then have to go ahead and backtrack, what can I do with those three lines? I can join them. Now, if I do an offset, 
two inches there. Now I've accounted for a door. Now my my floor plan doesn't really account for that. It accounts for it being an exterior door, so I would expect my nab to be where? Over here? So I can place my nab right over here. Anybody know roughly how far off the ground? I'm over here at the door. How far that needs to be? Three feet. Has to be right on the 36. Yeah, to the center. 36 to 42, typically. Okay. And I could account for putting a door light in this. In other words, I could account for what? A window in the door. Okay. I could account for my exterior lighting. I'm probably going to. Okay because these are all things that I'm going to be adding that are going to have some form of leader line that's going to be now pointing to some specification. What's my expectation? What's that going to be? Okay. Absolutely. Shall we? Yep. Let's do some. All right. Oh, would you? Uh, well, I'll see what I can do. But I can go into my, my generally accepted hatch details, right? Click on my hatch command and notice that, oh boy, it pulled up a whole bunch of hatch stuff. And my pattern can be a solid, a gradient, a pattern, or I can use or define it. Back into it again. Here's my gallery of various things. Stars. <laughs> you like stars? I don't think so. We're going to we're going to go with a uh, I know brick. Because actually this this gives us something uh, this gives us something fun to play with. So you notice as I move my information about, grab my brick, there's my brick. And you say, wait a minute, I didn't expect that to be solid. Scroll in. At the moment, that's very teeny brick. At, at, the, at the moment, it is teeny, tiny, awful, terrible, small brick. So now our hatch pattern scale is going to give us some way of elucidating what we expect. So I'm going to change this to 6. And you notice now I have a bigger brick. I'm going to change it to what's a typical brick length? Eight. Okay. All that in just a little bit. And now there's no doubt in our minds that this is what? A wall, right? We do need to account for a threshold and a doorknob. And I want to place a doorknob, and I'm going to place it. What would be typical? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm here at the door right here. Right? I want to measure to the center of that knob location. We'll go four inches for now. And then I'm going to take this line and I'm going to offset 36. And what have I just done for myself? There's my knob. Okay. I'll make it 3 inch. I'm exaggerating. Never going to be that big of a hole. That's a 3 inch radius. Probably should make that. So I'm going to make that uh, 1 and 1 16th inches. Sweet. There it is. Now I really don't need those anymore. Those anymore. Okay. Any doubt in your mind? Thank you. I wanted the lever. Ugh. <laughs> You're making this difficult, Jim. The look in the blocks I gave you. Yep. Brass. There you go. Brass. The whole door's there. Yeah, brass lever. No. No. Do you have a window in the door? Do I have a window in the door? Not in this case, no. It's just a, a bare door slab. Today, elevations. Next time we get together, we're going to start moving into roof plan. You have enough information on your prints that at least we can start working our elevations in addition. My point to giving you this demo today isn't that I'm expecting you, you've got to be here today. You've got plenty on your plate. It's just a matter of now when you feel like you may be running a little short on something to do, you've got more that can be added to it. Okay? One last thing I want to show you, and that is we're going to go back into layers and do a little grouping. Okay. So here's my layers. Back in drafting 12, some of you may have learned, I, I'm kind of hoping you did, um, I tried to be pretty... Uh, pretty upfront about it, and that was we had layer controls that we could create a new property filter. I just showed Drafting 12 this today, this morning. The thing I'm going to show you now is if I click on that filter, it brings up my layers in a list and the ability to build a filter based on whatever criteria I give it. So I'm going to build a filter criteria based on color and make it red. Now every layer that is red will come up in that filter. I'm going to click OK. Now you notice I filtered on red layers. I'm going to create another layer filter and I'm going to filter on Hidden two. And why would you think that this is kind of handy? All the layers are still there. They're still turned on. But in this case now, I really, I can concentrate on red layers and turn off the ones that I don't need. Turn them all on. And I can always go back to my total layers. But filtering by property is part of the battle. Creating a new group is another part of the battle. So I now have 
an elevation layer and I'm going to drag my elevation construction lines to the group. And my elevation walls to the group. Okay? Now, rather than a property, I can actually tell it what I want to be in that group. So when it comes to your foundation walls, your footings, your foundation, all your foundation notes, you can group that into a group filter that now on or off foundation. So I'm not trying to downplay creating a separate drawing file for each, but now because we can control the layers and we can control the visibility, we still have it in one file. Okay? Once I create multiple files, then I have more than I have to manage than I may want. Yeah. And there's one other thing that we're going to do. Once we get to actually plotting, we're going to actually be able to plot to a layer state that includes those groups. Okay. Let's say I'm an architecture firm and I have a subcontracting architecture firm that is working on Windows. I'm going to give them a certain layer state and I'm going to give them a layer state in AutoCAD that's a fully addressable, usable file, but is unique to that firm as a subcontractor. That way I know I can filter all their stuff out if I need to, or I can create bid packages for different entities to bid on, and no matter what, I have the ability to now filter and group that information. That's just kind of a powerful tool. Okay, So by property, or creating a group. Okay. Maybe I want to create my elevations where I want a hatch layer to be unique and all by itself I can turn the hatches off for all my materials. If I have lighting fixtures in my elevations, maybe I don't want those to be electrical. Maybe I want those to be elevation fixtures. So that way, if I'm doing an elevation, I group it in the right filter, I can turn it on. It doesn't go with the electrical fixture and then get turned off because I'm not doing that layer at that point. Make sense? Okay. So it be in two different layers, though? Electrical and elevation? Uh, can you have an entity in two different layers? No. It's a good thought, though. You can see where that can kind of cause some issues. One on, one off, both on, both off. Could be. All right. Okay, questions for me? All right. After today, we got seven more times we're getting together before finals. Okay? I know. We're running running close to the wire. So this time we're working, we actually four different things we can be working, floor plan, elevations. Uh, foundation and electrical. Next time we get together we'll work on roof plan and we'll start to develop that kind of finishing package or cover. Um, probably apply a little bit of site plan work and then we'll actually be pretty close to getting ready to get out of this plan set because here's what I want to have happen the week before finals if we can. You are all qualified for at the termination of this semester if you have a passing grade to certify in AutoCAD. Okay, AutoCAD certification. So as an AutoCAD certified user, all right, that's another opportunity that goes with you as a marketable skill base. All right, and I want you to be ready for that. It's not a difficult test. It tests your foundational knowledge, some of the things we've been doing today, not elevations, but how to use AutoCAD. So in other words, it's not about architecture, it's about AutoCAD. So it's about grouping layers. Okay? It's about layer states. It's about line properties and so forth. What Tyler? Do you feel the industry is kind of leaning more away from AutoCAD? Not in the trajectory of my career path. I think maybe in your career path you might see an end to AutoCAD as a primary tool. 
Right now, there are so many billions of drawings and drawing entities out there in AutoCAD, it would be very difficult to just...